Hi and welcome, my name is Lawrence Baker and this video is going to be about high pass sharpening using the high pass filter. That's what it means, you're using the high pass filter to sharpen something. Now high pass filters have their origin in electronics and all they do is cut out low frequencies. For instance, if you're recording with a microphone and some recording equipment, at the side of the road there's a lot of traffic rumble, you can have a hardware high pass filter to cut out those low frequencies. In Photoshop, you're doing similar things, but what you're doing is with the high pass filter, you're protecting the areas of low frequency, which is things like the background here. The skin is high frequency, the textures, the lines, the outside of his jacket, that is high frequency. That background is very low frequency. There's a light orange in it, so it's not completely low frequency. And the trouble with high pass sharpening, it might introduce some noise in there. And that's another downside to high pass sharpening, you can't get rid of noise easier. Now, why am I running it down? Well, I believe smart sharpen is far better. So why am I showing you high pass sharpening? Well, it gets you to understand Photoshop a little bit better because we're going to use blend modes. So I'm going to show you two different methods. I'm going to show you the non-destructive method using a smart filter. And then I'm going to just duplicate this layer and run high pass on it. So let's get going. Let's duplicate this layer. Command or Control J, because you never work on a background layer. Command on a Mac, Control on a Windows system. We duplicated the layer. Non-destructive method, right click. Either go Convert to Smart Object or come to Filter, Convert for Smart Filters, which creates a smart object. You cannot have a smart filter without first having a smart object. Heads up, you cannot do a pixel edit on a smart object, you can only transform it, resize it, warp it, etc. If you want to do a pixel edit, you have to double click here, which is the quickest method. Double click, it opens up a new document with the file extension .psb, Photoshop's large file format. That's irrelevant. The important thing to understand is you've got a new document, you make your pixel edits, then you go Command and Control W or File Close. You'll be prompted to save if you've made some changes. I haven't. So Command and Control W, and back to the original document. Quick heads up there. Filter, other, high pass. Now, it's around how I would normally use it, around two pixels. The disadvantage to using this non-destructive method, it just makes things a little bit more long-winded. But anyway, around two is fine. I'm going to bring it up to 2.6. Let's zoom in. Command key kept pressed. Alt or Option were going back out, so Command or Control key kept pressed to come back in. You can see the effect. So where it's grey, just plain grey, there's nothing taking place really. It's picking out the high frequency areas and putting a glow on them. And that's what sharpening is all about. It's creating luminance around the edges of things. So if you bring the radius to something like 40 or 50, in fact, you're kind of increasing the clarity and also playing around the colours. That's another disadvantage of high pass sharpening. It will affect the colours, but it won't clip highlights or shadows. That's his advantage. Now, honestly, I will tell you now that smart sharpen is far better for creating this gritty effect and for just ordinary sharpening. I would say that high pass sharpening is more interesting than it is useful, but it helps you understand Photoshop a little bit better. So I'm going to show it to you. So let's put it down to something like 2.5 is what I call a normal sharpen. Okay. We've got our smart filter. We've got a filter mask, which we can use to mask out areas we don't want sharpened, i.e. the background. So, you know, if you have these problems with noise, you can negate them or get rid of them by using the filter mask. The important bit is here in the bottom right hand corner is the blending options. Double click, change the blend mode to one of the blend modes from overlay down to linear light. Pin light and hard mix don't really work. Now they are contrast blend modes, which makes 50% gray transparent. So overlay, you can see straight away, it's got rid of the 50% gray. We're just seeing the sharpening. Now, if you play around here and let's say go down to linear light, you're seeing the changes take place, so you, you've got some control, but it's still a bit cumbersome. So overlay is what people normally stick with. Soft light is a softer version of overlay. It's less contrasty. Hard light's too hard, and let's show it to you. A bit too much. It's brightened things up. Vivid light, brighten things up. Quite gritty, more grittier than overlay. And linear light is the strongest of the lot. If you want that very gritty effect, you can 
take the high pass filter and take it up to something like 50 and you'll get a really gritty effect. Often people do that to get that painterly sort of gritty effect. But anyway, I'm going to stick with overlay. I'm going to do a normal sharpen. Turn it that layer on and off. Before, let's use the space bar for the hand tool and probably Z or Z to quickly zoom into there. And you can see the photographer in the background there. Turn it on and off. I would say that's a little bit too much. So I personally wouldn't go and change the high pass filter now because I think two pixels is about right. I would come here to the blending options and drop the opacity to around 40%, let's say, and go like that. Then I would look again on and off. And I would say command and control zero to fit on screen. That's a pretty good sharpen or command one to see it at actual size or 100% zoom and turn it on and off. And I say that's pretty okay. As I said, it's got its drawbacks. It, it's number one drawback, it will shift color slightly and you can't really negate that. And it's put more noise into the background because there was luminous noise there already and luminous noise will be made worse by any sharpening and you cannot negate that here at all unless you mask it out, of course. So let's show you the destructive method. Let's get rid of that layer and command and control J to duplicate. And then all I'm going to do is run high pass filter. I've run it already before, so I'm just going to go OK and stick to those settings. Um, don't forget there's no opacity change, of course. So then you've got access to the blend modes to here from overlay to soft light, and you can just go down through and pick the one you want, but 90% of the time it will be overlay. So then you could drop the opacity of the layer. So that's quick and dirty, that method. And sometimes I just use it because I cannot be bothered to play around with smart filters. But if you want to work non-destructively, work with a smart object. But now, as I say, I probably drop the opacity down to something like 40 or 30, and it's not too bad. I'll quickly show you, as I'm here, how you could use it to create a painterly or gritty effect. Command and Control J, I won't use the smart object. I'm just going to go to Filter, other, high pass, bring up to something like 80. You can see the color shift straight away. Go down to, let's say, linear light, which is the strongest of the lot. And command zero, you can see that really gritty effect. Maybe that's a bit too much for some. If you want to negate it, you can use a hue saturation adjustment layer or make it black and white if you wanted to. But I would just come down and take the saturation down a little bit. And that would be ideal for a book cover, let's say, if this guy was an athlete or a special forces guy. You see that look a lot, but honestly, you can do it smart sharpen as well. It's just as powerful and it's far better because you can get rid of noise, etc., etc. So high pass sharpenings, more interesting than it is useful. It will shift colors. It doesn't clip the highlights or shadows. It's fun to play with. But personally, I would stick to Smart Sharpen for most normal sharpening and for creating this sort of gritty effect as well. That's it, guys. Thank you very much.